Have you ever wondered what you would do if you saw an animal left unattended in a car on a hot day? Maybe this has happened to you already and you've dealt with it, but perhaps you really have not thought it through and anticipated how to deal with what can be an urgent and stressful situation. Remember, how you react might mean the difference between life or death for that dog. There's a cute photo that is making it around on the internet as a meme. It shows a dog sitting in the front seat of a car and the window is closed. And attached to the inside of the window is a message printed on a large piece of paper which states, please don't break the window. The AC is on, he has water, and is listening to Steely Dan. Now, whatever you think about the dog's taste in music, this image and its popularity brings up the points that leaving animals in hot cars is an issue that is on our minds, and that the owner is aware enough to protect his dog and his vehicle. I'll post the picture on this show's blog. But with summer almost upon us, it's worth reminding everyone that it doesn't take much for the temperature inside a car to become dangerously hot very quickly. Many people are unaware of just how fast the interior of a vehicle can heat up, even if the outdoor temperature is comfortable. Here's some basic facts from the humane side of the United States. When it's only 72 degrees outside, the temperature inside a car can heat up to 116 degrees in less than an hour. And when it's 80 degrees outside, the temperature inside a car can reach 99 degrees in 10 minutes. That's less than the amount of time it takes most people to run into a store. Many people think that rolling down the windows is all that they need to do. But for example, on an 85 degree day, with the windows open slightly, the temperature can reach 120 degrees in 30 minutes. That's a death trap for dogs. Some of you may remember that I had California Assemblyman Mark Steinorth on the show back in August of 2017. And to illustrate just how hot it can get inside a car, Assemblyman Steinorth and two of his fellow assemblywomen took the hot car challenge. They took a timer and a thermometer, locked themselves inside a car for 21 minutes on a day when it was 89 degrees outside, and documented how quickly the temperature inside the car became unbearable. Within 12 minutes, the temperature in the car was 101 degrees. By the time they had been in the car for 21 minutes, the temperature had reached 108 degrees, and the three occupants were awfully sweaty and uncomfortable. Boy, did they ever want to get out of that car. And if you've not seen this video, check it out online. It's called A California Assemblyman Steinorth Takes Hot Car Challenge. Okay, so it's an interesting experiment to see how people react to a very warm environment, but remember, Dogs' tolerance to heat is not nearly as good as humans. If it feels hot to you, it feels a lot hotter to dogs. Think for a moment what your dog does after coming in from a walk on a hot day. Both of our dogs right away will lie on the cool kitchen tile, and sometimes one of them parks herself right in front of a fan. Whichever they choose, they let their tongues hang way out and pant. Contact with the tile cools by conduction, where direct contact draws the heat away. And the fan helps cooling by convection, where the airflow moves the heat from the animal. But as we know, panting is the primary way dogs cool themselves. And unlike humans, in which the skin perspires, which creates cooling from evaporation, dogs do not really perspire. They pant, but it's not nearly as effective as the human mechanism to stay cool in the heat. And by the way, brachycephalic dogs, which are flat-faced, short-nosed dogs like Pekingese or Pugs or Boxers, have the weakest ability to cool themselves by panting. So it doesn't take much for these dogs to get overheated. Now, in a hot car, things really can break down quickly. When the surfaces of the car, like the seats, get warmer than the animal, no conductive cooling can occur. And the dog's panting itself can even contribute to the rising temperature in the vehicle. Plus, the dog's fur can trap heat, making things worse. If a dog is panting heavily, it's because he's already overheated or rapidly approaching that point. Symptoms of heat stroke in dogs include restlessness, excessive thirst, thick saliva, heavy panting, lethargy, lack of appetite, dark tongue, rapid heartbeat, fever, vomiting, bloody diarrhea, lack of coordination, as well as high fever, muscular weakness, and even absence of panting. But keep in mind that it can be very difficult to assess through the vehicle's windows if a dog is indeed developing heat stroke. And there's no magic formula for how long a dog can stay in a hot car before she develops heat stroke. And here's an important point. We know that heat stroke can quickly kill a dog, but in cases that are not fatal, 
a two degree rise in body temperature can cause permanent organ and brain damage. This is something even an expert observer may not be able to reliably assess by looking through the window. And there's a point at which even a vet cannot reverse the effects of heat stroke. So for sure, you don't want to allow the situation to go on too long. Heat stroke is a very dangerous condition that takes the lives of hundreds of animals in the U.S. every year. And a bit later, I'm going to talk about how to cool down a hot dog. So what should you do if you see a dog left in a car on a hot day? I live in the hot desert of Southern California, and I can tell you I've had to remove dogs from hot cars numerous times. I actually keep a tool in my car that is made specifically for breaking a car window in an emergency. There are several different types which you can research online and buy one and leave it in your car. It may be useful someday. Some of them also include seatbelt cutters, which you'll be happy about in case you need to extricate yourself from a bad situation. One of my animal advocate friends keeps a small shovel in her trunk just in case, and I suppose that would work as well. Sometimes you just need to use what's at hand, such as a nice sized rock, and more on that later. So how to proceed. If time permits, the Humane Society of the United States advises that you do the following. First, take down the car's make, model, and license plate number. Take some photos or videos. Take a picture of the dog in the car. Is the car in the shade? Is the car parked right in front of a store? And you could take a screenshot of your phone to have a record of the time you found the dog in the parked car. Next, if there are businesses nearby, notify their managers or security guards and ask them to make an announcement to notify the car's owner. I have found, and I bet you'll also find, that the store managers are eager to help. Next, and again, only if time permits, because remember, every minute that dog remains in the hot car lowers the chances for a good outcome. If the owner isn't found within a few minutes, call the local police or animal control and wait by the car for them to arrive. Keep the phone numbers to animal control in the police department programmed into your phone. I also think it's a great idea to recruit one or more people to help you and join the cause of saving the animal. Because if it comes down to needing to break into the car, having like-minded folks join you will provide moral support and the confidence that you're doing a just act. Plus, they can help you handle the dog once he or she is liberated and manage the situation with the owner and the authorities should they arrive. So of course the priority is helping the dog in the car, but you might want to learn what the local laws concerning animals and hot cars are. An increasing number of jurisdictions prohibit leaving pets in hot cars, and many grant immunity to Good Samaritans who rescue pets in these situations. For example, in 2017, Indiana became the ninth state to pass a Good Samaritan hot car law, allowing citizens to forcibly enter a vehicle under certain conditions to rescue companion animals confined inside. Presently, 12 states have similar hot car laws. But I can tell you, even without a law and from personal experience, it's very unlikely you will be cited by the police or sued by the owner if you take reasonable steps. And to the contrary, you probably will be considered a hero. Also, it's quite possible that by leaving the dog in a hot car, the owner has committed a crime. So if you're sure the dog is doing okay and you've called for help, then it's crucial that you stay on the scene and monitor the dog. And as I mentioned before, it's advisable to recruit others to wait with you. But if you've now determined it's time to get the dog out, let's talk about how to do it safely. Presuming that you've already determined all the doors are locked and you cannot reach into the car to open a door, and be careful if you try because the distressed dog may be very afraid and protective. Then it's time to decide what you're going to use to break the window and how to go about it. And just a reminder, make sure that you've taken the steps to document the situation and protect yourself and then do what you need to do to save the pet's life. So choose the window furthest away from where the pet is located in the vehicle. Have a leash or towel ready to prevent the released pet from bolting out of the vehicle. You don't want the pet to become more frightened or disoriented and get struck by a passing car or run off. And the car's alarm might go off and the noise could further scare the already distressed pet. I know people, including myself, who carry leashes in their cars in the event they need to rescue dogs, either from hot cars or dogs running loose on the road, so you can get into that habit as well. Now, there are a variety of tools designed to break car windows, and I'm going to tell you about them in a moment. But be aware, without them, it can be very hard to break a window. It really takes a lot of force if you use a rock or a bat. If you don't have one of the specialty tools I'm going to tell you about on hand, you'll need to try using whatever you can find, like that nice size rock. 
and use it to bash the window in near one of the window's corners rather than throwing it. And I guess a crowbar or a lug nut wrench might work as well. But like I said, it's going to take some force and some effort. There's a YouTube video where a police officer demonstrates breaking the window with one of those police issue metal expandable batons and also a long flashlight. And in both instances, the window shattered easily with only a moderate strike to the corner of the window. Oh, and by the way, if possible, wear gloves when you do this, another handy item to keep in your car, to prevent injury from the glass or from the animal you're about to rescue. Anyway, the video goes on to show one of the specialty tools I mentioned before, collectively referred to as window punches. And the officer takes this small tool, window punch, which is a steel tipped point, and with a bit of firm pressure to the corner of the window, it just shatters. If you've not seen one of these in action, it's a little surprising how easily they cause a window to shatter. So it's really worth keeping in your car or in your purse or even in your keychain. And as I said before, some of them also have a guarded blade in case you need to cut a seatbelt. You can find these online and Amazon shows a variety of them with one popular brand called Rescue Me. That's R-E-S and then the letter Q-M-E. Another style looks like a pen or actually is a pen. These are heavy duty metal tools with sharp tips and you just press into the window corner and boom. And I'm telling you, you got to get a few of these. And as I was reading about window punches, I discovered a company I want to tell you about. It's called Mobile Glass, and it's based in Texas, and the website is mobileglassco.com. They have a program that will reimburse you the cost to replace a window that you smashed in the course of helping an animal or child anywhere in the country. Isn't that great? They say, quote, we want to do our part to help good Samaritans in a time of crisis. They have a video on their website as well, and the program is called Smash to Save a Life. It's really admirable. So in the unlikely event that the irresponsible owner whose pet you just saved insists you pay for the damages to his vehicle, that's where this program comes in. For you, the brave good Samaritan, not for the idiot who put his animal's life in jeopardy. It's not there to compensate the irresponsible owners themselves. Now, I've had to remove dogs from people's cars numerous times over the years, and not once have I been cited by law enforcement or sued for breaking into the vehicle. And I will continue to do it without a second thought, because to me, the satisfaction of saving a life is the most crucial issue in this situation. If you do see that someone has left their dog unattended in the car on a warm day, even with the windows open, you know... It is your business. If you don't feel you can get the dog out for whatever reason, or you're uncomfortable taking this action, here's what I'd urge you to do. Let as many people as possible in the area know about the situation. Ask for help. Ask people to wait for you. Ask a couple of people to run into nearby stores and have the owner of the car paged. In the meantime, and as I said before, take the appropriate pictures. Ask if anyone has something in their car that could be used to break the car window and get the dog out. But if you've been paying attention, you're going to go online as soon as we're done here and order a few of those window punches so you'll have one with you. Remind the people around you how quickly we must act because brain damage and organ failure can occur as a result of heat stroke. And if you don't want to break the window, and if I'm not around, chances are someone else like me will jump at the opportunity to do it. By drawing attention to the situation, you'll gather support and help for the dog. You'll also make a clear statement to the dog's owner, should he or she return to the car, that they were wrong and their stupidity will not be tolerated. It's much harder for the owner to take on a group of 10 people and say, it's none of your business, than a single person. And like I said, in some states, good Samaritans can legally remove animals from cars if they have reason to believe those animals are in imminent danger. And if you want to know your state's current laws on rescuing animals from cars, the Animal Legal and Historical Center keeps track of this. Of course, I don't really care what the law says, but you might. When it comes to knowing whether or not the dog in the car is in imminent danger, sometimes you have to make a judgment call. If it's warm out, remember it can be 20, 30, or 40 degrees warmer in a parked car. And as I said, if you're feeling the heat, a dog is definitely feeling it more because she cannot cool her body as well as we can. And a final thought on people who leave their dogs in the car on a warm day. 
besides all the risks to the dogs we've been ranting about, these people are putting the rest of us in the uncomfortable position of having to make a judgment call that may involve damaging their property to save an innocent living being. We didn't ask to be put in this situation, but these owners don't seem to care about the concerns of the people around them or their neighbors or their fellow citizens. They are not only ignorant, but are being socially irresponsible and just plain selfish. I want to tell you about this online video of a real rescue from a hot car that illustrates a few things. It's pretty short and we don't have the whole story, but there's a small white dog in a BMW sedan. The windows are cracked a bit and a pretty big guy has this large rock or maybe it's a piece of concrete and he's determined to get that dog out. With him are at least two adults, which is good. He has a concerned team and they're helping him to choose which window to smash, also good. Plus there's a lot of kids around watching and taking videos. So first, he tries to break the window by hammering the rock into the side rear window, moderately hard, but it just bounces off the glass three times. Then he tries the other rear window and throws it at the window, and again, it bounces off. Then tries again, even harder, and still no luck. And this is a big, strong-looking guy, maybe six feet, 220 pounds. Well, on the third try, the rock does indeed shatter the glass, and you can even see some of the glass flying outward. And he then opens the car door and takes the dog out. And fortunately, the dog is fine after getting out. What happens then is not shown, but it's really great this was caught on video. Now, I'm not going to argue with his method, but if you're not of his stature and you're in a pinch, you might first try to find a rock with a pointed end and strike the window in one of its lower corners first. But better yet, get a few of those window punches. So now let's talk about how to cool down an overheated dog whether from a hot car or any cause. Maybe you encounter a dog that has been left outside on a hot day, or you inadvertently let your dog get overheated while taking a hike on a warm day, or, or whatever the circumstances, these simple tips apply. A few summers ago, we had a power outage that lasted all day long, and we're in the Southern California desert, and it was super hot outside that day, like maybe 112, 115, and as the day progressed and as it got warmer and warmer in the house, we got concerned about one of our dogs in particular, so we started cooling her down. So here's what the experts say to do if your dog has become overheated. First, move her to a cool area, preferably one with air conditioning, and at the same time have someone call a veterinary hospital and tell them what's going on. Then, continue cooling the dog down by using cool water, not cold water. Cool water, either from a hose or by placing her in a child's swimming pool or by placing cool, damp towels on her body. And with the towels, concentrate on the head and neck the areas underneath the front and back legs, the pads of the paws, and the groin area. Offer the dog cool, but not cold water to drink in small amounts. Don't force her to drink. And if the dog is unconscious, obviously don't put water in her mouth. And if the dog is unconscious or is really looking sick or has confusion or has had a seizure, if there's vomiting and diarrhea or labored breathing, get that dog to the hospital right away. And remember, don't use ice packs because bringing the dog's body temperature down too aggressively or too quickly can be very dangerous. 